by Donald Trump and his family. We'll see if he formally, there he is. Right there. And Tom Yamas, we are now getting reports from our, again, we told him our intrepid reporter John Santucci with the Trump campaign, uh, that from two sources that uh, Hillary Clinton has called Donald Trump. That's what we're hearing tonight, George, and it, it is out there in other news reports as well that, that Hillary Clinton has indeed called Donald Trump to concede this election. So there you have it. In a few minutes, you're going to be hearing first from the vice president-elect of the United States. We can't call it yet, but we've heard that, Don that Hillary Clinton has called Donald Trump. And let's listen to Mike Pence. This is a historic night. The American people have spoken and the American people have elected their new champion. America has elected a new president, and it's almost hard for me to express the honor that I and my family feel that we will have the privilege to serve as your vice president of the United States of America. This moment, I come to this moment deeply humbled, grateful to God for His amazing grace, grateful to my family, my wonderful wife Karen, our son Michael and his fiance Sarah, our daughter Audrey, far away, and our and our daughter Charlotte. I could not be here without them. And I'm, uh, I'm deeply grateful to the American people for placing their confidence in this team and giving us this opportunity to serve. And I'm mostly grateful to our president-elect, whose leadership and vision will make America great again. So let me say, it is my high honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the President-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. There he is. You hear the music, you see the man, you see the family. The man who has just pulled off the most stunning, unbelievable upset in American political history. The man who will be the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Matthew Dowd. I am taking in the moment, um, and I was just thinking, it wasn't more than a few weeks ago that a number of people were trying to tell him to get off the ticket, and now he's the president-elect of the United States. The first time somebody without political experience or served in the military has gotten elected president of the United States. And John Carl, we can see the emotion in his eyes right there, followed by his son, Barrett, his wife, Melania. And his family, there his kids, they were by his side this whole campaign. He said he could do it alone, but he had them there every step of the way. Yeah, this, this, was, this was a family campaign. He didn't have the big surrogates, he didn't have the big political supporters, the celebrities. He had Trumps. He had his family, he had his wife, he had his children. I, I'll tell you, I am not convinced he thought this day would come. I asked him that many times, and, you know, I, I really, I think he may be as surprised as, as we are. You can see, as I said, the emotion on his face right now, and he's about to take the podium. He congratulates Mike Pence, kiss to his wife. 
He will be the next president, Tom Yamas. We talked about that right at the beginning of the night. Whether he believed it at the beginning, it has happened now. It has, and, and as John was speaking, I was wondering where he goes once he becomes president. If he stays at Trump Tower, he goes to the White House. Let's listen. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. Thank you very much. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard-fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Hillary has worked very long and very hard over a long period of time, and we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. I mean that very sincerely. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. It's time. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans. And this is so important to me. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, <laughs> I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. As I've said from the beginning, ours was not a campaign, but rather an incredible and great movement made up of millions of hardworking men and women who love their country and want a better, brighter future for themselves and for their family. It's a movement comprised of Americans from all races, religions, backgrounds, and beliefs who want and expect our government to serve the people and serve the people it will. <laughs> Working together, we will begin the urgent task of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. I've spent my entire life in business looking at the untapped potential in projects and in people all over the world. That is now what I want to do for our country. <laughs> tremendous potential. I've gotten to know our country so well. Tremendous potential. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Every single American will have the opportunity to realize his or her fullest potential. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. We are going to fix our inner cities and rebuild our highways, bridges, tunnels, airports, schools, hospitals. We're going to rebuild our infrastructure, which will become, by the way, second to none. And we will put millions of our people to work as we rebuild it. We will also finally take care of our great veterans. We've been so loyal, and I've gotten to know so many over this 18-month journey. The time I've spent with them during this campaign has been among my greatest honors. Our veterans are incredible people. 
We will embark upon a project of national growth and renewal. I will harness the creative talents of our people, and we will call upon the best and brightest to leverage their tremendous talent for the benefit of all. It's going to happen. We have a great economic plan. We will double our growth and have the strongest economy anywhere in the world. At the same time, we will get along with all other nations willing to get along with us. We will be. We'll have great relationships. We expect to have great, great relationships. No dream is too big. No challenge is too great. Nothing we want for our future is beyond our reach. America will no longer settle for anything less than the best. We must reclaim our country's destiny and dream big and bold and daring. We have to do that. We're going to dream of things for our country and beautiful things and successful things once again. I want to tell the world community that while we will always put America's interests first, we will deal fairly with everyone, with everyone. All people and all other nations. We will seek common ground, not hostility. Partnership, not conflict. And now, I'd like to take this moment to thank some of the people who really helped me with this, what they are calling tonight, very, very historic victory. First, I want to thank my parents, who I know are looking down on me right now. Great people. I've learned so much from them. They were wonderful in every regard. I had truly great parents. I also want to thank my sisters, Marianne and Elizabeth, who are here with us tonight. And where are they? They're here someplace. They're very shy, actually. And my brother, Robert, my great friend. Where is Robert? Where is Robert? My brother, Robert. And they should all be on this stage, but that's okay. They are great. And also, my late brother, Fred. Great guy. Fantastic guy. Fantastic family. I was very lucky. Great brothers, sisters, great, unbelievable parents. To Melania and Don. And Ivanka. And Eric. And Tiffany. And Baron. I love you and I thank you. And especially for putting up with all of those hours. This was tough. This was tough. This political stuff is nasty and it's tough. So I want to thank my family very much. Really fantastic. Thank you all. Thank you all. And Lara, unbelievable job. Unbelievable. Vanessa, thank you. Thank you very much. What a great group. You've all given me such incredible support, and I will tell you that we have a large group of people. You know, they kept saying we have a small staff. Not so small. Look at all the people that we have. Look at all of these people. And Kellyanne, and Chris, and Rudy, and Steve, and David. We have got, we have got tremendously talented people up here, and I want to tell you, it's been, it's been very, very special. I want to give a very special thanks to our former mayor, Rudy Giuliani. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He traveled with us, and he went through meetings. And see that Rudy never changes. Where's Rudy? Where is he? Rudy. Governor Chris Christie, folks, was unbelievable. Thank you, Chris. The first man, first senator, first major, major politician, and let me tell you, he is highly respected in Washington because he's as smart as you get. Senator Jeff Sessions. Where's Jeff?
Great man. Another great man. Very tough competitor. He was not easy. He was not easy. Who was that? Is that the mayor that showed up? <laughs> Is that Rudy? Oh, Rudy got up here. Another great man who has been uh, really a, a friend because he was one of the folks that was negotiating to go against those Democrats. Dr. Ben Carson. Where's Ben? Where is Ben? And by the way, Mike Huckabee is here someplace, and he is fantastic. Mike and his family, Sarah, thank you very much. General Mike Flynn. Where is Mike? And General Kellogg. We have over 200 generals and admirals that have endorsed our campaign. And they're special people, and it's really an honor. We have 22 Congressional Medal of Honor recipients. We have just tremendous people. A very special person who, believe me, and, you know, I'd read reports that I wasn't getting along with him. I never had a bad second with him. He's an unbelievable star. He is... That's right. How did you possibly guess? So, let me tell you about Reince. And I've said this. I said, Reince, and I know it. I know it. Look at all those people over there. I know it. Reince is a superstar. But I said, they can't call you a superstar, Reince, unless we win. Because you can't be called a superstar like Secretariat. If Secretariat came in second, Secretariat would not have that big, beautiful bronze bust at the track at Belmont. But I'll tell you, Reince is really a star. And he is the hardest working guy. And in a certain way, I did this. Reince, come up here. Where is Reince? Get over here, Reince. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's about time you did this, Reince. Huh? My God. Yeah, say a few words. Ah, oh, come on. Say something. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Thank you. It's been an honor. God bless. Thank God. Amazing guy. Our partnership with the RNC was so important to the success and what we've done. So I also have to say I've gotten to know some incredible people, the Secret Service people. They're tough, and they're smart, and they're sharp, and I don't want to mess around with them, I can tell you. And when I want to go and wave to a big group of people, and they rip me down and put me back down in the seat, but they are fantastic people, so I want to thank the Secret Service. And law enforcement in New York City. They're here tonight. These are spectacular people, sometimes underappreciated, unfortunately, but we appreciate them. We know what they go through. So it's been what they call a historic event. But to be really historic, we have to do a great job. And I promise you that I will not let you down. We will do a great job. We will do a great job. I look very much forward to being your president. And hopefully at the end of two years or three years or four years, or maybe even eight years, you will say, so many of you work so hard for us, but you will say that, you will say that that was something that you we're really, we're very proud to do, and, and I can thank you very much. And I can only say that while the campaign is over, our work on this movement is now really just beginning. We're going to get to work immediately for the American people. And we're going to be doing a job that hopefully you will be so proud of your president. You'll be so proud. Again, it's my honor. It was an amazing evening. It's been an amazing two-year period. And I love this country.
Thank you. Thank you very much. There he is, the 45th president of the United Thank States, president-elect Donald you. J. Trump. He has triumphed, proving all the doubters wrong. Now, as 275 electoral votes, the state of Pennsylvania has gone his way. The state of Wisconsin has gone his way. He has received the call from Hillary Clinton. He will be the next president of the United States. You can't say it often enough. He called it amazing. It is just stunning. It, he's pulled off something that no one thought was possible two years ago. He now will be the next president of the United States. And in those comments, we had some vintage Don, Donald Trump. He called this a complicated business, a nasty and a tough business. But but he also said it was time to bind the wounds of division, time for this nation to come together, promised to be a president for all Americans. And Matthew Dowd, he did seem moved by this moment. Uh, he seemed visibly, physically moved, and you could tell it in, as he walked up, you could tell it in his face. It was a very gracious speech, a very gracious. He thanked everybody, but I was struck by two things. He talked about two things that he wanted to do right off that Democrats and independents and Republicans could agree to. Infrastructure improvements and taking care of the veterans. And there's no question to me, if he goes ahead and pushes that first, he's going to get a lot of cooperation. And said he wants to be the president, Martha Raddatz, of all Americans. All America. He said it's a great moment. We will bring the country together. It's also Georgia's sobering moment. We have to remember all of us. This is the hardest, most important job in the world. And one of the jobs of the president is to keep us safe. And Donald Trump has said again and again, he's the man to do it. He said he was also, David, you're deeply humbled by this moment. He, in fact, did say that, and you could see it on that stage. He talked about making sure this is a country where everyone can live up to his or her fullest potential. I thought that was interesting, given who he was up against uh, tonight. Uh, he talked about that phone call.